Hi guys, welcome to another Knitting Pod. I am Lena and I'm so happy you're here to chat about knitting and fiber and life and all sorts of things. I have so much to chat about, um, so let's jump right into it. Um, what has happened? I feel like tons has happened and it's only been a week since I saw you guys last. We had some friends visiting, um, a friend I've known for over 20 years and we reconnected when I was in Dallas last um, Thanksgiving and her and her daughter came to visit us. So it was incredible. Um, my daughter just absolutely fell in love with um, her daughter. My daughter is nine and she's 15 and I've just, I've never seen my daughter um, connect with another girl, an older girl like that. I mean, there were so many tears when they left I, for like days. So anyway, it was amazing. I Honestly, I was like thrilled because this girl is just, you know, she broke the mold and I just thought to myself, my daughter has good taste in humans. And that's always heartening to feel as a mom that your child is drawn to someone with wonderful qualities. So anyway, um, what is going on fiber wise? Um, I chatted a bit, oh, I wore the bubble cardigan last week and I didn't talk about it that much and I got a lot of um, comments about it. So I wanted to actually chat a little bit about it today. What I wanted to chat about is the bubble cardigan versus the Trinigan cardigan. So the bubble cardigan is by Stephen West and um, Trinigan is by Andrea Maury. And this is not a pitting those two against each other because they are my 100% favorites and we are not gonna pick favorites between them. But I have them both here. This is the bubble cardigan and this is the Trinigan. And when I was, um, I guess what drew me to making the Trinigan was that the shape reminded me so much of the bubble cardi. And here's the deal. I wear this so much that I thought, yay, like this is the same silhouette and I will wear this as much as this and then I'll have like two options. So did it turn out that way? Do I wear this as much as I wear this? I do not. And I wanted to tell you why, because we put so much effort into our knits and then it's a bummer when they don't turn out. And I wanted to kind of share what it is about this guy that I don't, why I don't wear it as much. So I'm gonna put it on. Well, before I put it on, I'll just let you see how gorgeous it is. I love the way this turned out. It's spin cycle yarn. I've talked about this in past episodes. Um, you can just scroll back and find the ones I talked about it in. But it's um, spin cycle. Dream state is the contrast color and this main purple and coral color is versus. The base is called versus. In the pattern she uses trine the base trine and I believe dream state. But anyway, I used um, verses because I liked the colorway. So here's the deal, you guys. I love this pattern. It is a bottom up cardigan, whereas this bubble cardigan was top down. But let me tell you why I think I don't wear it as much. And it, it just really, it surprised me. It's gonna be very controversial. Please don't come for me, okay? I'm not trying to um, be negative, but I must be honest. I had never used Spin Cycle before this, and um, I don't know why. I was just not as drawn to that color-changing yarn as I was to speckled yarn, but then when this came out, I was like, this is the perfect opportunity to try it. <coughs> Excuse me, I've been sick. <coughs> I've been sick all week and um, I thought I had strep throat, but I don't. 
thank God. But it was like swallowing knives all week. So I'm a little coffee. Anyway, back to this guy, Spin Cycle. Loved working with it, love all the color options. Had planned like a trillion projects while and after I finished this. But since then, so I finished it over the holiday break. So January was when I had it, my FO. I've realized like, it's just the spin cycle has like a stiffness. And somebody had mentioned this in a comment to me like way back that they thought, she thought that spin cycle wick just felt like cotton and she didn't get it. And I was like, oh, you know, I don't, I don't feel that. But now I think she's sort of right. I mean, it, because one of these is super wash and one is not, and they both feel the same. It's not like a super wash versus non super wash. It just doesn't have the like soft feeling that draws me to wear my hand knits. Whereas this guy is just the coziest thing in the whole world. Like whenever I just want to feel like my hand knits make me feel like just loved, like I'm being cocooned in coziness. And this just doesn't have that feeling. And I think if I had knit it in a different yarn, it would have had that feeling. Cause like the silhouette, the way it fits, the everything else, I love it. But is it something I grab? No, I have to like literally kind of think like, okay, I need to wear that because I made it. It's almost more like outerwear than it is um, a cozy cardigan. And like I'm wearing it now and it feels fine. It's not itchy or scratchy. It's it's held up beautifully, but it's just, there's something about this spin cycle that I just don't love the finished knitted fabric. I don't know if it's because of this mosaic, like I'll show you the backside. It, it kind of makes a denser fabric maybe, I don't know. Like you can see all the little floats. It doesn't feel dense or too, I don't know. I don't know. So that's my opinion about the Trinigan. If you want to make it and you've used Spin Cycle and you love it, rock on. If you've never used Spin Cycle, boo, this is not a cheap yarn, right? Like this is money that, this is hundreds of dollars of yarn. It's a bummer when it doesn't feel like it turns out as beautifully. And you know, this is double block, double wet blocked, because if you watched my last videos about it, it is, um, you know, it, it gave me this weird thing in the shoulder and I tried to fix it, which I did. So it's been washed, blocked twice and it did not soften up. Um, there's just like, it lacks drape. If you can just you could just sum it up that way. Whereas I will put this on real quick for you. This does not lack drape. This is made in all super wash yarns. This is gonna keep getting caught, so I'm gonna put that away. This is made in all fingering weight yarns, except this collar is a an alpaca that I feel is a bit heavier. It's like a sports, maybe even almost DK weight. It's 100% alpaca. This is the first garment I ever knit and I was a baby, baby knitter. And I, um, I did not understand alpaca as much as I do now. And so it's just a different, it's just different. It's um, very drapey. So, if I could go back, I would not have used this. I would have used at least a Merino alpaca blend. But anyway, these are all colors um, that, so I based this color palette on Stephen West's, I believe the pattern, the shawl was the Fantastic. He had done his sample in this color palette and I was smitten, I mean, I'll put a picture up, but it just like, you know, those colors, that palette, when it just, you see it and it's just like, <clears throat> that's how I felt. So I based this on that. I think I had all these in stash 
um, from various projects. Um, but you know, the one drawback of this is, honey, a fingering weight cardigan this big is going to take a hot second to make. So that is my only thing when I like, just know it's a super fun project, but it's not like a pop it out in two weeks kind of project. I feel like this took a while and it's not knit in the round. So there is a decent amount of purling, but this bubble pattern, I mean, it's just so fun and dimensional and so different than just normal stripes. I just find it so appealing, so appealing. This is unlike the Trinigan is bottom up. This is top down. It starts with this I-cord, um, whatever. I think it was an I-cord. Anyway, I think it was an I-cord. Then you pick up stitches on the back and then you pick up the stitches on the panel. And this is so funny, y'all. I picked this color, this purple color. I think, was it Undercover Otter? I think it was Undercover Otter. I fell in love with this color. It is so stunning. And I picked the col that color for here because I wanted it to be the most like, uh, the color that popped the most because it was my favorite color. So then I did that and I started on my repeats and I got to the, like here and realized I'd completely forgotten to use this fuchsia purpley pinky color. And I was so bummed. And so this um, sleeve business is the reason I did it was I just couldn't stand not having that color in this. So I thought it would pop on the sleeve, which I think it did, but it also bled into the white, which was a bummer, but who cares? I'm not a perfectionist when it comes to my knits. I think, I think the fun of it is just their handmadeness. Um, so anyway, yeah, I, the, the pattern actually has full sleeves, unlike the Trinigan, but I decided not to make the full sleeves because I had never done magic loop and I was terrified of it. So I stopped it here because this is where I could still have like the regular needle. And I'm so glad I did because it's so wearable. It's wearable in the spring and summer. And in the winter, you can layer it with a long sleeve under, and it's just, it's one of my absolute favorites. It just feels like me. And I'm telling you, the fabric is fantabulous. The, um, this blue is linen quill. There's some hedgehog fibers. This gorgeous burnt orange is a silk yak blend that I had in my stash, and I'm so bummed because I finished it and I have no idea what it was called. And then the yarn shop I got it from, they didn't have it anymore. So it was such a great yarn and I have no idea what it is. And so I cannot procure it again, but it taught me that I love yak fiber. So all is not lost when I encounter yak fiber, um, at least a blend, I feel like I feel like I'll be drawn to that. So yeah, I wanted to talk a little bit about this because I got a lot of questions and last time I had forgotten um, <clears throat> to talk about it. So that is that. If I had to make it again, I would do the Trinigan in a different yarn. I think it would be beautiful in a different yarn and maybe even not as pricey since I wore that last time I'm gonna wear this guy. And I love the pattern, and I think you could make um, so many cool color combinations. So props to Andrea Mowry, as usual, for fantastic patterns. Um, but yeah, it's good to experiment with different yarns and decide for yourself. You shouldn't feel like just because Spin Cycle or any yarn, I'm not picking on Spin Cycle, but Spin Cycle is so popular. People rave about it, and... That doesn't mean it's for everybody. And, um, you know, I might try it again, maybe in a different pattern. I really want to make the pressed flowers cardigan, 
by Amy Christoffers. It is stunning. I have some gorgeous pearl Soho linen quill in like a creamy color for the base, but now I know I had been dreaming of all the different colorways of Spin Cycle because their colorways are stunning that would make a really cool pressed flowers cardigan, but I'm glad that I had this experience and I'll just use a different yarn. I'll probably use something from my stash. So that is that. Moving on. Um, I hope that was helpful. I wanted to also talk about, because of the bubble cardigan, I thought it would be a good time for me to show you my very first knit project. Some of you have asked me to talk about it and I thought this was a really good time because um, before, well, it has something to, because it has something to do with the bubble cardigan. Before I knit, I crocheted. I learned to crochet in my mid twenties from my husband, he wasn't my husband at the time, but he had a friend um, who crocheted and I was like, I wanna learn and so she, she taught me. And so we would sit, this was a different lifetime. Like I just remember it so vividly. We would go to this restaurant and sit on these big cushy couches and she would teach me how to crochet. So I crocheted for years, but it was um, always still, like I loved it but it was still the dreaded word. It was a hobby. You know, I hate that word, but that's the category it went to a hobby. Like it's something to do, right? And I continued to crochet for years, like tons of, I never crocheted garments, but I always crocheted like blankets. And I was super into making those little amigurumi crocheted stuffed animals. Love, love, love. Anyway, and then I don't know how, I think my cousin had turned me onto Ravelry and I was just on Ravelry and I came across this picture of Stephen West and his bubble cowl. And I'm gonna put a picture up so you can see the exact picture that changed my life. And yes, that sounds dramatic, but it's true. Somebody left me a note the other day and said, you're so dramatic. <laughs> yes, I am, but it's really, it's just, it's my personality. I think I'm a little dramatic. My husband, I said that to him and he was like, you should meet our daughter. <laughs> anyway, so my point in telling you all this is the bubble cowl, it took my breath away. It literally, I had just never seen anything like it and I just... I was stunned. It was such a dramatic picture. And I was like, who is this man? What is happening? I just, I don't think I could even sleep that night. I was like, just my eyes were like saucers at night, just like scrolling, trying to understand what was happening and who was the Stephen West and changed my life. I like literally woke up the next day of like, I will knit this if it is the last freaking thing I do. So my first project ever knit was the bubble cowl. I, and here it is. I'm going to show it to you before I keep talking about it. Isn't it amazing? I'm so proud of it. I love it. I wear it all the time during ski season. I have this, um, the brand Aloe has this, they have this, what's it called? It's not a bomber jacket. I think it's called like the Teddy jacket or something. It's like a Sherpa material and it has this big hood that buttons right here so that it like makes a very cozy layer. Um, but it's, you can snap it off. And I have two of those and I have one that's in tan and I snap it off and never have put the hood back on and I wear it with this. So it's like this cute bomber jacket look. And then I put, I'm going to put this on for you. Where's the little seam? I look like a little crazy person. Um, anyway, so I wear it and then you can just 
pull it up because it's freezing in the mountains and it's cozy. It's a double layer. So you, you know, you knit it double. I hope it's not making all sorts of crazy sounds in my earbuds. Sorry about that. Um, so yeah, I mean, it was, it was quite the adventure to make, have this be your first knit ever. I was like, I mean, so confused. What is an I-core? What is, you know, it's knitting into a stitch five rows below. Everything was like brand spanking new, but I did it. And here is the finished result. It's so funny because, so you start off in this pattern with these smaller bubbles and then you make medium bubbles and then you make these huge bubbles and then you go in reverse order and then you seam it to this I cord. I think it might, I don't remember exactly, <laughs> but so when I first started knitting this on this side, I had net, my hair is probably a mess now, more than it already was. Um, I had never like knit. So I was death gripping those needles and my tension was extraordinarily tight on this side. By the time I worked all the way around to this side, I had like gotten into the flow of knitting and my tension was substantially looser. And then you're supposed to seam these things two sides together into this purple, where I have the purple I-cord. Well, one side was like several inches wider than the other side. And I was like, oh my gosh, what am I gonna do? I can't, I couldn't figure it out. So I hot glued it. I busted out my hot glue gun. I folded like right here and I hot glued that baby. And I have had this for years and it's totally fine. Nobody knows except all of you now know. But I just wanted to share that story because look, it's a learning process. And I wasn't about to rip it back. I was gonna make it work. Like Tim Gunn says, make it work. And it works and I love it. And it's like got such a special place in my heart and Someday, Stephen West and I are going to wear our matching bubble cardi, um, cowls and just bike around Amsterdam together. I'm sure that's never going to happen. But in my mind, it happens. So there you go. First project ever. I will, if my house were burning down, I would grab this before leaving. Because, And look at all these colors, you guys. This is a lot of Malabrigo Rios. It is some Cascade 220. I have so much of these colors in my stash still, but like just, there's just nobody that does color like Stephen West. I mean, what if Stephen West had let self-doubt keep him from doing from sharing his talents with us. Can you imagine that world? I think about that all the time. Like when we, you know, admire people's work, whether it's a book or a knitter or whatever, an artist, what if they had held it in and not been confident enough or not pushed themselves out of their comfort zone to share their work? Like what a different world it would be. I think about that all the time and then I, that's what helps me push myself further because, you know, no one is served by all of us just being too scared to push ourselves further. Just a thought. Any who's will be, say goodbye to Bubble Cowl. I'll try to take a picture of myself wearing it the way I told you and post it on Instagram sometime. So those are things that I have um, made. What am I working on now? Same old Lace and Fade Boxy by Holly Locatelli. I've made so much progress. As I said, I've been sick. I think I was just so exhausted from the last week. I had taught some extra classes and I had just been really busy. And then our friends came in and it was just so hectic, constantly talking and, you know, trying to show them a good time. And by the time they left, I was just, 
just done. So I couldn't teach this week. I could barely speak above a whisper, so I obviously couldn't teach my fitness classes. Um, so I did a lot of knitting and it was amazing. It was just the best. I mean, being sick sucks, but getting extra knitting time is magic. So I've made a ton of progress. It's a little hard to see. Oh no, you can see, that's a lot of progress. Um, I only have one more lace section to go, if you can believe it. Um, and I have to say, a lot of times as you progress in a project, well, this is just my opinion, a lot of times as you're working through a project, when you're getting like two thirds, three quarters of the way through, I find myself often like, okay, I just kind of want this to be over, either because I want to work on something new and shiny, or I um, am just tired of this or whatever, I want the finished object. I am not finding that feeling with this at all. I'm finding myself just feeling joy at every every turn with this project. It's kept my attention. It's I felt like I've gotten better at the lace, um, like more fluid and confident and less like constantly hesitant, like to make sure I didn't mess something up. I know I've said this in every video, but the placing stitch markers between each lace repeat is a game changer. I highly recommend anyone, uh, you know, embarking upon anything really, cables, color work even, lace, just those stitch markers help you. It'll help you figure out if you do mess something up and to just keep track. So really recommend doing that. I tried it on today because, you know, I'm almost done. It's like, maybe it's time to, you know, see if it fits and it does. Um, the sleeves, you know, I had talked about, and many of you had said this was a well, you know, well, worn concern that these tiny little armholes are too tiny turned out to be just right and i am just enjoying every single stitch this yarn i've talked about it i feel like a trillion times apologies but it is wandering flock in the baby packa um which is the sport weight that's the stockinette section in this gorgeous colorway called mermaid parade and the lace mohair in the same colorway. Thrilled with my color choice. It just feels so springy and light and happy and I love it. I cannot wait to wear it. Um, hi, silly dog is here. Come here. She's like, why are you, you always tell me not to snore. I don't think you can see her cute little face, but she's, she's me, sweetie. Okay. That's the lace and fade. If you haven't made it and ever wanted to, I think you should go for it. It is spectacular. Um, my other project that I'm working on is the wide rib hat. It is a free pattern on Pearl Soho's website. I am making it for my sweet boy to take with him on, oh, <laughs> I was like, that looks weird, to take with him on a trip he's taking for school. And I love it. I am I feel like I should be done imminently. You know, this is like the project I have in my bag all the time. So I mostly just knit this on the go, in carpool, at a long stoplight, at a doctor's appointment for a kiddo, whatever it is. It's a great just little pattern to make progress on during those little found moments. You know, I just... Not everybody is gonna have hours or even 30 minutes segments to knit, but I guarantee you, if you think about how many times you open Instagram or just scrolling on your phone, and if you replaced those with a hat, you would have a hat in two weeks because two rows here, two rows there, they add up, boo, they add up. So yeah, this is Malabrigo Rios in a colorway I can't remember, but I really love how it's like tonal and blendy and moody and just really cool. And so far the fit is incredible. I always struggle with hats being too loose. And this is the first hat where I put it on and I was like, oh my gosh, this like fits like a head glove. 
also known as a hat, um, but it fits like what I feel like a hat should fit like. And since it's super wash, I figure it'll stretch, so there's room for a little stretchy stretch. So yeah, that is that. That's the other thing I'm working on. I feel like I am kind of like two thirds the way through both of those, so I'm really excited, um, getting excited to think about what I'm gonna cast on next. I'm at that point, I said this in the last video that it's March and that weather has truly shifted from like deep winter to winter light. The days are longer, um, the daylight saving business is ending or starting or whatever this weekend, shockingly. So we're gonna have even more daylight. So like the, I'm dying to cast on the, an alpaca. If you watched my last episode, I wanna make the Northwoods V-neck in the beautiful alpaca, but I feel like it's so, it's gonna be too warm. By the time I finish it, it would be unseasonable. So I don't know what I'm gonna do next, but you know I have about a trillion ideas, but we'll go into that another time. What else? Um, I think that's all the knitting. Um, Instagram, you guys are just the best people in the world. Like the, if you watched my last video, I told you I was gonna get on Instagram reluctantly because I just, I wanted to be able to connect with you guys in a different forum. And you know what, I've only, I think it's only been a week. And I just, love seeing y'all's Instagram. It's, it just makes me feel like we've chatted in on YouTube, but to see your projects and little glimpses of your lives, it just, it brings me so much joy. You have no idea how much joy it brings me. So thank you. If you went and followed me, it's at another knitting pod, just the same, same title as I am here. And um, if you subscribe here and there and leave me a message on Instagram about what your favorite pattern is and why, at the end of the month, I'm gonna draw one winner and send you some exciting little um, gifties from me. So go do that. If you want more details about that, you can watch my previous episode. Um, I already got some fun things for um, the winner and I can't wait to show you guys what I'm all the fun stuff I'm gathering. So go do it because I think it'll be worth it. Um, what else? So trans transitioning a little bit out of knitting, but still knitting related. While um, my friends were here, our friends were here, we were um, trying to figure out, it's kind of a weird season to visit here because it's not hiking weather. Uh, there's just too much ice really in the mountains if you don't have spikes for your shoes and if you don't ski, you know, it's just kind of weird and they didn't, they don't ski. So um, I was kind of trying to figure out things to do. And one of the things I've wanted to do was go to this museum that's in Denver called Meow Wolf. Have y'all heard of this? I would like to know because I've heard about it for so long and we would even drive past it whenever we went into Denver. And I always heard teenagers were always like really wanted to go there. And so I was just kind of like, okay, well, there's a teenager here, let's do it. My kids wanted to go. Oh my gosh, you guys, it was, it was mind blowing. I mean, you know, people say the word immersive art and what does that really mean? This is what that meant. Like this was the most immersive experience. It was just, it was fantastical. I'm gonna put some pictures so that you can see. It's very hard to explain, but it's like, it felt like someone had shrunk us down and transported us like into a tree or underground or some, it was like being inside nature in a way that I had never felt. It was unbelievable. Like you, you know, if you have watched this episode, even if you've never watched this podcast rather, and you're only watching me now, you understand I'm very drawn to color. Like everything I do usually is very colorful and 
at least some element of color. This was like a color junkie's dream come true. And all I kept thinking the whole time we were there was Stephen West needs to come to this and then I want Meow Wolf to be filtered through his brilliant mind and just to see what he would come up with after having that experience because it was just it was so imaginative and colorful and there was texture and the scale was just it was it was next level it was next level you guys if you have the opportunity you need to go they have i think there's one in denver las vegas I want to say Santa Fe and maybe even Grapevine, Texas. I don't know. Go look it up if you're near one of those places. Linda, if you guys ever come, if you and Stephen ever come to the United States together and you don't come visit me, I'm going to be so sad. But anyway, in all seriousness, Linda needs to make Stephen go to this someday, okay? She I just, it is like, it would be a gift to the world if Stephen West went to Meow Wolf and then designed some patterns because it would just be, it would just be the coolest thing ever. Trust me, all right? Linda, to-do list, go. Okay. So that was just the highlight of my week last week. I think that might be where I got sick because it was super crowded, but nonetheless, it was worth it because it was just, it was amazing. It was a bright, magical experience, and I highly recommend it. The pictures that I put in do not do it justice, but I just want you to kind of get a little glimmer of what it's like. Okay, what else? What is in my ears? What am I consuming via all the other mediums? Lots of things. I have so many recommendations. I just finished the book, and I don't love saying this title because it's just it doesn't sit right, but it's called, I know you've heard of it, My, I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy. I, it's a memoir, a nonfiction. I listened to it. It was intense. It was a lot. It was hard to believe. It was moving. It was a great book. Um, if you have there's a lot of abusive kind of situations and there's a lot of eating disorder talk so if that's triggering I don't think I don't think it's the book for you it's it's heavy um but I loved it because I just love getting deep into other people's points of view and like what what led them in their lives to where they are. It just, I don't know. It was incredible. It was a beautiful book. My only criticism was I almost felt like I wanted more at the end. I felt like it sort of ended abruptly. Like I think it could have used a little more meat at the end. But um, if you were thinking about it because it's on every list and I just feel like I see it everywhere, um, I think it's a worthwhile read and it was a real quick read. She, I listened to the audiobook and she, it's the author narrating it and she talks really fast. Um, her voice is very particular. So I would listen to the sample before you commit. Um, I'm also still reading The Emotional Lives of Teenagers. I'm just kind of taking that in small chunks. I think it's incredible, it's so valuable. Just so much just reasonable, rational, comforting advice that feels like confirms that you can kind of follow your instincts as a parent, that it's okay if your kids, if you have kids that are struggling sometimes, like life is hard, being a teenager is hard, it's okay. They'll get through it just like you got through it. And um, it just feels very like, it makes me feel solid. The one thing I loved that I'm gonna share with you that she talks about is teaching your kids that their emotions are their guide in life, um, that our emotions are trying to point us towards something. 
And so much of our energy, I think, even as adults, is spent trying to avoid feeling something or tamping down an uncomfortable emotion. Whereas if you think about what is this uncomfortable emotion telling me or what is this really happy emotion trying to tell me, rather than just thinking of it as something you have to suffer through, it's something you have agency over. And I think when we try to stuff emotions down or <clears throat> self-medicate those emotions away, they just come out in a more aggressive warped way just to try to get our attention even more. Does that make sense? And so that's not even a parenting tip. That's like a life tip. I just think every time I read a parenting book or listen to a parenting podcast, I come away feeling like I can live my life better for myself, not just be a better parent. So if you are on the fence about that book, I think it's outstanding. <coughs> I'm so sorry. I'm still so dry. And every time I lie down, I just start coughing like crazy so I can't sleep and it's not been very lovely. <coughs> I'm so sorry. And since I'm a non-editor, that's, you just gonna have to listen to me cough. Um, if you have a recommendation for a fiction book, I'm really looking for like just some good old fiction. After the memoir and some nonfiction, I'm just really, really craving like fiction. Um, <clears throat> of course, the I was drawn to this book uh, by its cover because it's really com uh, colorful. I'm so predictable. Anyway, it's called Pineapple Street, but I think it's like a Good Morning America book pick or something, which, you know, does not make me want to read it instantly, but it's on my list of maybe, but I'm open to suggestions. So please suggest a way at any fiction that you love. I would love your suggestions. Um, I've also stumbled upon a podcast that I binged in two days time. If you are a true crime fan, um, I am a true crime fan, but I listened to so many true crime podcasts and then I started feeling kind of gross. Like I was, you know, just voyeuristically enjoying someone's miserable, you know, encounter with something horrible. This podcast is true crime, but it doesn't feel like that at all. It's not sensationalized. It's called The Coldest Case in Laramie. I will link it. It is brought by, um, it was uh, released by Serial Productions and New York Times podcasts. Two awesome, reputable, you know, journalistic entities. So I felt good about listening to it. And it's not like, it's not ending with some big bam, oh my gosh, but it's so good. Um, it just affected me so much. It was super thought provoking. I don't want to ruin it, but if you listen to it, please leave me a message. If you found the end very thought provoking, I just, all I'll say is, you know, we build our lives around our experiences and our interpretations of events. We consider them facts, but they're really just our subjective experiences, right? And I don't know, we, we centralize ourselves in all our experiences. And we, it, this, this podcast just brought to mind how like, I don't know, I don't know how to say it, just how an entire story can be built around memory that is skewed. That's all I'm gonna say. Um, Another podcast that was serial in New York Times was called We Were Three, and I'm listening to that after because I binged Coldest Case in Laramie, and We Were Three is very heavy, and but it's outstanding. I've There's three episodes, and I've already listened to two of them. So outstanding. Also recommend that, but please, please definitely be wary of the content. It's very heavy content. Um, a final recommendation 
because we're almost out of time. I don't like keeping you past 45 minutes. Is on TV, I think it was Netflix or Hulu. I'll, I'll make sure and put it in the show notes. Tinder Swindler, always late to every party. That is me. But I think it was released last year and it is so good. It was a documentary about this guy <clears throat> who swindled women, which sounds like meh, whatever, but it was so good. A couple of friends had um, recommended it and I was like, what the heck? I don't have a huge attention span for TV. It has to be really compelling to draw me away from Ravelry, <laughs> to be honest. This was so good and just, oh, my heart just went out to those women and just, what a crazy person. Go watch it if you haven't. If you have watched it, we can commiserate as to how freaking crazy it is, this whole story is. Um, again, I don't wanna ruin the ending or anything, but such a good watch. And it's like an hour and a half, so, you could walk, probably watch it in one go, unless you're a sleepy infant like me and fall asleep at nine o'clock every night. Anyway, okay, that is all I have to say today. Thank you so much for watching. If you're still here, please go subscribe to me on Instagram if you haven't already. Um, thank you for being kind and patient as the learning curve of Instagram ramps up. I am not there to like play the algorithm. I just am there to hang out with you guys. So I don't always post knitting content. I try to make myself post every day or two. I'm really trying, but it's just, it's very hard for me. It feels weird and new and <clears throat> out of my comfort zone. And I just, I love you guys for being so kind and so encouraging at every turn. I just, I hope you understand that it means so much. So y'all are the best. I can't wait to chit chat again with you next week. I hope you have a super fun Fibery weekend and I will see you next time. Bye guys.